We have done basic mathematical operations like addition, subtraction, multiplication and VN stress law. But many times we need other operations. For example, finding the square root of a number or the trigonometric function stress law. We don't have built-in Python functions for these operations, but there is a module named as math which we can use for this purpose. So what is a module in Python? A module is simply a programming file containing data or the functions. And if we need those in our program, we can import the module. Other than built-in functions, Python has different modules for different functions in different domains. For example, for mathematical functions, there is module math, which is available in library. And if we need to use that, we can simply import that. Later on, we will create our own module too. But at present, we will use the available modules. To use a module, we use the keyword import followed by the name of the module. Now this means that we can use all functions available in the math module. But how do we know what functions are defined in the module? For that, we can use dir function, which stands for directory and pass in the module name. On output, it will show you the list of functions or data values available in the module. Starting few names are surrounded in between double underscores. And these are special attributes for which you shouldn't worry at this moment. And after that, these are functions or constants available in the math module. For example, you can see this sqrt, which is to find the square root of a number. You can see the help on any of these functions or constant by using the help function and passing in the attribute named as math dot the name of the attribute like sqrt. It says that it returns the square root of x when x is provided as input. Let's see how we can use it in our program. Let's take a value from user. And to find its square root, we will use the square root function as math.name of the function, which is sqrt. Let's print the result. We used math.sqrt here. It is important to mention module name since there can be more than one modules imported in a program and we have to mention from which module we want to use the function. However, there is another way of importing a function from module like from math import sqrt. Now we can use just the sqrt function of the math module and no other. And now we do not need to use the module name here we can directly use sqrt. Now if we have to use another function from the math module, for example, there is trigonometric function tan available in the math module. So if I want to use that even like as math.tan, I cannot use it because we imported just the square root function. So to use another function, we will have to import that too. If we import module as on line number one, then we need not to mention each function while importing and can use all available function in the module, but as math.sqrt or math.tan or math.sign stress raw. So line number two method simply allows to directly use the function name without writing the module name. There is a third way as well by which we can import all functions of a module and can directly use those. The syntax is from math import static, which means import everything from the math module. Now we can use any function of the math module without mentioning the name of the module. Other than functions, math module has a few constants as well. For example, the value of pi. Of course, I'm using pi directly since we imported like from math import asterisk. If we have simple import math, we will have to use this constant as math.py. I have listed here detail of few important functions available in math module. These are functions like floor, seal, factorial, 
then r logarithmic functions power and sqrt and this a cosine means r cosine which is cos inverse we have other trigonometric functions including the hyperbolic functions the trigonometric functions take in the angle in radians and not in degrees then are these constants like pi epsilon estes rho this nan is not a number and we will see its detail later on we also have function degrees to convert radian to degree and the function radian will convert degree to radian let's suppose we need to find the sine of 30 degrees which is 0.5 so we can use math dot sin for the sine function and if we pass in 30 this would result into sine of 30 radians and not 30 degrees so we should use radian function to convert 30 degrees to radians now the answer is almost 0.5 again we will discuss this later on that why floating values are slightly different now let's find the cosine of pi by 2 which should be 0 we can use pi variable of the math module the answer is very close to 0 remember this e minus 7 means 10 to raise power minus 7 now let's try some log functions like log of 100 Generally when we write log of x that means the log with the base 10 and log of 100 is true in that case but in most of the programming languages this log means natural log or the log with base e which we generally represent as ln of x So you can see the answer is not true because it evaluated ln of 100 and not the log with base 10 Let's see the help on log function You might not be familiar with this notation of a function. It shows that it will have one compulsory input parameter denoted here as x. Then there can be a second input parameter for the base and the default value is set to e. So if we do not provide the second parameter, the base will be e and that will be a natural log. And if we need log with some other base, we can provide that as second parameter. You should read this detail too. So that means if I am interested to find the log with base 10 I should provide 10 as a second parameter. And now we have expected answer as 2. We have other log functions as well. You can see other than log we have three more functions. Log 10 means it will be log with base 10. So using this we do not need to provide 10 as second parameter. Similarly log 2 means it is a log with base 2. The log 1p means log 1 plus meaning that it finds the log of 1 plus x so if we pass in 20 it will return the natural log of 1 plus 20 so let's try log 10 which will find the log with base 10 for 1000 it should be 3 we have this exp function which returns e to power x So here exp2 means e to power 2. We also have this pow function with two input arguments which will find x to power y. We also have used built-in double steric operator for this. I hope you know about the seal and the floor function. Test that by yourself. We will see the detail of these finite or infinite or not a number cases later. Other than a tan which gives tan inverse there is this function a tan 2 which takes two input arguments x and y and gives the tan inverse so x positive y negative and y positive x negative will give the different result there is a review question for this function so that's all from this lesson thanks for watching